Welcome to Goof On, everybody. Is it Monday? It is Monday, January 24th, 2022. I'm your host, Richard Giordano, and this is Goof On. It is a chilly, brisk night right now. It's supposed to be down in the 20s here in Florida, and we're freezing our tushes off here inside our home. Made a video this morning showing my breath inside my flat, and it was awfully cold. It was 44.5 degrees here inside the house. <laughs> I can't believe it. I won't turn the heat on because there's mold on the heating coils. And when you turn it on, it smells like wet dog a gym, a wet sock, like socks, and dirt. And I turned it on when I when it first got cold here a couple, several weeks ago, months ago, actually. We had a cold night, and this smell came through the house, and it wasn't going away. So I turned the heater off, and it wouldn't turn off. It kept blowing and blowing and blowing this this disgusting smell. I had to put a mask on. I had to open up the doors, the windows, three o'clock in the morning. I woke up cold and haven't turned it on since. And the reason is I asked a heating and air conditioning company to come on out and take a look. And they said, well, what's going on? I told them and they said, ah, oh, just keep it on for, uh, uh, you know, a few minutes. It'll burn off. I said it was on for 20 minutes. It didn't go away. They said, keep it on longer. Excuse me, I just chugged some coffee. They said, keep it on longer. It'll eventually burn out. That's a common thing here in Florida. Am I common? So, I bought, uh, I was sick this weekend. I had an allergic reaction to this. Uh, these pills called uh, Focus Factor. Something like that. And I wanted my brain to be to be better, you know. It was working, but I got sick. And <clears throat> I, I must have had an allergic reaction. It was pretty bad. And um, anyway, that's why I didn't do Saturday. I was on another show Saturday, and I don't even know how I did it, the Josh and Artemis show. And uh, right after that, I went back into bed and don't remember anything. But I bought an electric blanket last night because it got down, you know, like I said, they got 26 degrees outside in Florida and uh, 44.5 degrees inside. And when I woke up, I thought I was seeing vape coming out of my mouth. I'm like, how could that be vape? I vaped 20 minutes ago. So I was like, oh, and I'm like, I can't believe I can see my breath in my house. So that's why I have no heat on. Tonight we're gonna. That's why I'm wearing this because uh, you know it's it's a it's a nice flannel jacket, uh, <clears throat> whatever you call this stuff. What is this fuzzy stuff? Flannel? I don't know. It's not flannel. It's uh it's good though. It's good. I got my nice how you doing hat from friends Joey Tribbiani. I can't believe Louis Anderson died the other day. Louis Anderson. Everybody's dying. All the comedians. You got Betty White who died at 118. Uh, Bob Saget died. 
uh, the guy, uh, he, 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 what's his name? He talked like that. Uh, Norm McDonald died. And uh, now Louis Anderson, who was only 64, 62, wasn't that much older than me. 70? I don't know. He, he wasn't, he was in his 60s. Funny guy. I saw him in 1986 at the Arizona State Fair. He opened up for Jay Leno. And Jay Leno was absolutely the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, and Louis Anderson was the funniest thing I've ever seen. They, it was a free concert because it was the Arizona State Fair. Good memories. Tonight we're going to talk about, anyway, hope you had a good weekend. As you know, the, the drama follows me where, wherever... I don't know. I got a lot of emails from everybody. Lots of messages. Lots of, uh, did you see this? I can't believe that. Who would have thunk? This is unbelievable. This is so mean. I can't believe people are stupid. You know, thank you. I want to thank you for the biggest support I've ever seen in all my years that I must have gotten 30 to 50, uh, 45 e messages on Twitter and Facebook and Messenger. And I mean, wow. Wow. I don't even have to go looking for the hate because you guys will deliver it. And thank you for that. Um, but if I may, let me tell you a little something I've been doing for a while maybe a good year and a half. Uh, when somebody does something about me, makes a video or whatever, says something on their show, I don't want to know about it. I don't go looking for it. If I find it by accident, fine. But I know you're just helping me out, letting me know. And that's okay. I'm not asking you to stop. I'm not. I know it's out there because it's always out there. And that, to me, means one big thing. We mean something. We do. We mean something. If we didn't, they wouldn't. Right? But they do. And they are. And uh, all I can say is ignore it. Kill them with kindness uh, because they don't know, and especially somebody who fake friended us. I'm not talking about uh, the guy with the good show. I'm talking about the girl, the guy with his girlfriends, that one. I don't even, I don't even want to mention their names because they don't deserve it. Um, they're hypocrites. They always preach on their shows how, you know, we want this community to be together and we need to corroborate and collaborate and, and help each other and be nice. And yet they're calling me all sorts of names and drawing pictures of me. And it's weird. It's so weird. It's so different now than the way it used to be uh, when, when we had a, the AZ UFO show because that show was much bigger than this. And um, I got to tell you, with YouTube, I, I don't understand YouTube. I don't understand how some people can get away with what they do. All I'm doing is giving my opinion. You understand? All I, all I did last week was talk about Lou and how I don't, I don't, here's what I see. Here's what I think. Here's why I don't like him. And I, and I said, I don't hate Lou the person. I hate Lou the ufologist. It's a big difference. The message he brings over is pretty shitty. And we're going to continue that tonight because uh, I was just going to do a, uh, a Corbell week. Eh, that, was, that was special for Lou. I don't want to spend a whole week on Corbell. So I don't even know if I'll talk about him. But tonight... We're definitely talking about Linda Moulton, Howdy Doody, Fresh and Fruity, Chocolate and Fluffy. We got to talk about it. 
I know you've seen it elsewhere. I know you've seen it on Canby and Show. Great job over there, you know, with that video. Forget about it. I'm going to play the original clip from Linda Moulton, Howdy Doody, on the Kurt Jamungle Show theories. Uh, is it theory of everything or theories of everything? Uh, what is that show called? Theories of Everything with Kurt Jamungle, I believe is how you say his name. Uh, I did see a couple of super chats. Let me go ahead and, and get that, and then we'll do some roll call. I think it was Ben Yorkshire with a two dollar one, I believe. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you know, I was just doing the little hello. It's been a been a weekend. I got to tell you that it's been a weekend. There he is, Ben Yorkshire with two pounds from the UK. What do you say, Ben? Thanks a lot. I appreciate the support. Mucho gusto, generoso, my friend. So let me give you one of these. Eh, gush. That's right. The Reserve Bank of India. Appreciate it. Mucho gusto. And who else we got? Who just sent one in here? I just saw it. Tony McClear with a 10-pounder. Mad on me. Both you guys just rolled it up. Would you put it in? Like a straw or something? And then they, they rolled up the money and they... <laughs> 12 bucks. Hey, by the way, thank you for supporting the show. Appreciate that. Again, mucho gusto generoso. And the show, uh, we're doing so much work behind the scenes, even though I was down and out these two days. There's a lot of stuff going on. So I'm glad to uh, be a part of it. And... Um, uh, we're going to be putting out eight documentaries this year. That's the goal. Third phase of Moon and Friends. That includes Alien Scientist, Stephen Cambion, Dark Hour Paranormal, Dr. J Radio Live. Um, yes, you heard the names. Stephen Cambion of Truth Seekers and Alien Scientist are joining us in this venture of the documentary, Year of the Documentary in Ufology. We are collaborating you may see all this in this fighting and shit like that, but deep down, we do care about each other. Uh, Cambian is not a problem. Alien scientist is not a problem. I consider those guys uh, friends, and if they don't want to be my friend, that's fine. Um, you know, you don't have to talk to me if you're afraid you're going to get that hoaxer label put on you. Let's all just grow up a little bit. Third phase of moon is not a problem. The problem is people living in the past. Third phase of moon hasn't done anything in five years that you could say, they faked it or it's a hoax. End it already because that hasn't happened, isn't happening. And why would those guys be a part of the team if they and I were hoaxing? Come on. I haven't even put a video out since 2012. Unbelievable. Thanks, Tony. Who's this guy? Den Bob with a seven dollar super chat. Another rolled up bunch of bills and seven and just put it. Hoo -hoo. Ah! A five and a two. I got it. I got it. Grazie, mucho gusto, generoso, Den Bob. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Den Bob. So for your seven dollar support. Ah, good. Mucho gusto, generoso. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. A continuing supporter of Goof on. Roll call, everybody! Dorothy Hawkins, you're in the house. Welcome. Samantha Morris, welcome to the show. Felicia the Beautiful Flores, welcome to the show. Graham McNeil, welcome to the show. Raymond Lawrence, welcome to the show. Coralan. Coralan. Welcome, <clears throat> COVID, to the show. Mr. Big Feet, how do you do? Mr. Big Feet, how do you do? Exactly O or zero. I think it's an O. O, welcome to the show. Storm Crow, welcome to the show. Frap Zap, Frap Zappuccino, welcome to the show. The Langster, Langley, Lee Fitz America, welcome to the show. John Hintz. Stargate Traveler. The show has you, my friend. <laughs> 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 
Scotty Eisner, not Billy. Scotty Allen, how do you do? I'm the, I'm like, I'm the show. Cardenas Lynn, or Lynn Cardenas. Welcome to the show. Paul Galvin, welcome to the show. Blue Chicken, welcome to the show. Cassie Cares, welcome to the show. Trey and Glow, that is the tempo. Welcome to the show. Cannabis King 420, 420 in the house. Welcome to the show. I got my 420 right there. Right there. Right there. Vladimir Putin. What did I say? On the back channel, not here. Zitma Dereskoski is me at Kushka. Understand? Welcome to the show, Putin. All right, who's coming through that front door? I know we started an hour late, but I needed some time. Sorry. Really, I am. I, I, I did not like starting late. But I had to. I just had to. Did I miss? I missed a, a, a $10 super chat? Whose is that? Where is that? I see it. Easy E. But where is it? That This is weird. Stu Gerson, welcome to the show. I see you there. Metalhead, what's up? Welcome to the show. There it is. Easy E with a $10 super chat. You just rolled it up as well. And and you know what he did? Yeah, he did. He spit that son of a beep so hard. I think I saw a tooth fly out. That's what he did. He went... That's weird. Why is that a 50? That one's a 10. That's yours. Who's the 50? 50? No, there's no 50. No 50. Well, if you want to help, thank you very much, Easy E. Oh, by the way, this is for you. Thank you, Easy E021, for your $10 super chat. Hackers! All over everything, Easy E. Mucho gusto, generoso, papi. I make all these individually for you, as you know. Grazie, grazie. It's not a 50. It's not. I don't know where that came from, but it hurt. Whoever threw that out. Sapphire Elf, welcome to the show. Most people in this community are full of shiite. Welcome. Lunar Sparkles has been unblocked. Yes, I know. A lot of you were blocked. And I'm only assuming it was one person. It was a rogue. It was, it was a rogue moderator. Yeah, it was weird. Like I, I unblocked 50 people. Unbelievable. 50. Welcome to the show, everybody. All right. If I didn't say your name, it doesn't mean I don't love you. I do. It's just, you know, we'll be here for a while. Larky, Derry, Goth, White. What's up? Welcome to the show show. Shellshock. I don't want to forget you. I see you. Welcome to the show. What's up there, IR Film? Good to see you, too. Hey, what is that? Is that, uh, where is Black Lotus? I don't see him here. John Sports Cards and Collectibles is here. Welcome to the show. Bethany Cohen, welcome to the show. FAPA. What's up, man? Welcome, welcome. Tacey Hale. How you doing? Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Sapphire Elf. I don't know if I said it, but I'll say it again. Bethany, did I say it? I'll say it again. On the rise. Welcome to the show. I know. You know, on, on, on Mondays, I go like 10 minutes on the intros. Hello. How you doing? You know that stuff. Red Panda, what's up? Tonight's show's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. Fun. I, I like the way, you know what we're going to do? We're going to start it off with the Linda Moulton Howe. Because I know if you were over at Cambians, Truth Seekers, you heard it for two hours. I'm not going to spend two hours on her. I just want to talk about the the audio clip from Theories of Everything. And I'll probably, probably play the original clip and then maybe Cambians clip. You guys are really unbelievable. Look at the, the super chats, guys. Is this for real? Hey, FAP. Thank you, man. Oh, everybody's just rolling them up like joints tonight. 
That was yours. Ow! Damn it! That was like a tic tac FAP. Shit, who'd you have throwing that pitch? Probably one of those right handers from the Dodges. Mm -hmm. Thank you, FAP. Mucho gusto, generoso. We'll give you one of these. Hey, hold on, FAP. Yay. Yep. <laughs> I'm so immature. Who was blocked? No, Nathan, you weren't blocked. Uh, third phase of Moon was blocked. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about moderators were blocked. Third phase of Moon and Dark Hour Paranormal. Why Michael was blocked, I have no idea. But I think it's because he's friends with me. And Anthony Licio. Is that Tony L? Licio? I hate saying names wrong, brother. But thank you. Let's start means ma. Let's start means ma will be getting the wooden spoon out. Hey, I, we, do you, I can't believe you just said that. Wooden spoons are very popular with Italian mothers. My mother still has the Italian spoon that she used to hit us with. It's so old, but it makes the best sauce. <laughs> it does. It makes the best sauce. Don't call it gravy. All right? None of this West Coast shit. You got the gravy? No, it's sauce. Like, you wouldn't call applesauce apple gravy. Capiche? It's a one capiche show. I don't even get excited about the one capiche shows anymore. When we get to three, I get a little excited. Thank you, Anthony. Very, very good. Love it. Like your style. I think going to fit right in here. You are a supporter of Goofon, so now you get this. Thank you, Anthony. Licio, I probably said it wrong. $7 super chat about Ma's balls and wooden spoon egg good. Mucho gusto, generoso. Tony, Anthony, whatever. Yeah, that's not nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Death proof bum. What's up? Thanks a lot, Anthony. I hope I, I think it's Licio, right? I think it's Licio, if I remember my Italians from New York, Staten Island, even Jersey. Somebody said Jersey was like the armpit of the United States. It's not anymore. <laughs> it's not, though. It's not. Uh, Jersey's actually pretty nice. Uh, it's just got a bad rap from the 70s because there was a lot of murder, mobs, and meatballs. The three M's everybody loves, right? That was New York. Murder, mobs, meatballs. Swear to God. Every one of those shows you see on TV, uh, Bronx Tale, Goodfellas, all that stuff, uh, they're always eaten, and usually it's pasta and meatballs, right? It's true. They're always look in Godfather, the original. What did what did he do? They went out to have some spaghetti at Enzio's or something, right? And he shoots the dirty cop in here and in and, and, and in the head, and his partner. Remember, Scarface did that. Yeah, he showed up. It's amazing. Stu Gerson, he threw down a hundred pennies like it was nothing, and he rolled them up in a gigantic big. Fucking straw the size of a planet. And he went. Ooh. It'll be here soon. Thank you, Stu. A continuing supporter of Goofon. Thank you very much. Let's see. Let's give this to you. Thank you, Stu. Mucho gusto, generoso. Continuing supporter of Goofon. And right now. We are going to play the clip. Thank you, Stu. From uh, the Kurt Jamungle show. If you haven't seen this, Linda Moulton Howe. Whoa! <laughs> if you haven't seen this, uh, buckle it up because this is some great, great, great radio on YouTube. Excuse me, I just burped up my whole intestines all over you guys. That is disgusting. I couldn't stop it. I can't. I'm getting old. I'm. I've got. I've been Bidenized. All right. I wiped my butt. No, wait. My butt's been wiped. Same thing. Sapphire Elf. We'll get back to that $2 super chat. Diamonds plus, I can't see what that is. Looks like somebody putting their hands on their ears. Plus beer 
and and raging about alien stuff. Whoop. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sapphire Elf, for that. Uh, I'll just call it two dollars because I see the number two. I know it's uh, there's some uh, tomfoolery going on with the uh, what do you call? <laughs> I don't know. I can't think. But thank you very much. I'll have to give you one of these and that good. No, this one. You get a special one. Thank you, Sapphire Elf, and a continuing supporter of Goofon. All right. Any other super chats? They will have to wait. Because here we go in three, two, go. Yeah, that. Why don't we take a, a two minute break? So, this was uh, just to give a little uh, preamble to this. They've been going now for two and a half hours, roughly. And it was a pretty good interview, right? You get the whole Linda Moulton howdy duty, fresh and fruity scripted, rehearsed, and said a million times, answer, reply. Kurt, the consummate professional. This guy has a great audience. And uh, by the way, he and I are on good terms. Uh, I, I apologize for things I said. And uh, we are now on good terms. I asked permission to use this. He said it's okay. And you wouldn't believe the hell that this poor guy's getting. But you're going to hear this, and then I'll talk about what Kurt went through, is going through, and is going to be going through for a while if Linda doesn't uh, calm down. Check this out. Break. We can use the washroom. He can switch out the microphones. You can have some coffee. You can celebrate your birthday. Well, we're at 1230, and we started at 10. That's two and a half hours. We'll wrap up shortly. I just want to make sure that I get to Why some of these burning just, questions. What about one question? Can we go one question? Oh, oh one no. More question, and then we'll sure. Okay. Wrap. Okay. Let's see. This question is a tough question. <laughs> you look like a tough lady with your leather jacket. So this one comes from Steve Cambian from Truth Seekers. On your website, there's a picture of a genuine alien taken to the moon. And... <laughs> The image that you used was from a 2005 video game called Area 51. Cambian, so Steve Cambian is referring to himself in the, the third person. Cambian from Truth Seekers emailed you as the proof that what you're selling was from a video game. And and then you refused to change. So, okay, so whatever. Thanks, There's Pete. Some accusations there. Do you mind explaining to the audience what that picture is about, its provenance, and perhaps why you would not take it down if someone showed you it was video game art? Are you talking, what are you talking about? Okay, I will show, I can show the image. I don't have it printed here, but I can show you, I can show the audience the image at some point. So are you, so you're on, you don't know what is being referred to here with the video game cover art of Area 51 and that being used as a genuine image on your website, apparently. I have no idea what you're talking about. She knows exactly. Okay, so let's choose a different question. This one comes from the Unidentified Celebrity Review at Lou Angeles. Has there ever been a case that you had to redact because the information was incorrect? And if so, which case? Thank you so much. Huge Linda fan. Kurt, I don't know why you are reducing the interview to this kind of petty stuff at the end. I really don't. What? I have been working as a professional journalist since 1968. I started at KNBC television. I went to ABC in Boston. Who gives a I shit? I was hired to be director of special projects at the CBS station in Denver. I have corrected a million scripts. I have no idea 40, 50 years, how many scripts, information, that is just so is she saying she made f a million mistakes that she had to correct wow that's a lot of redactions uh i mean this woman has been the she was at the top of the food chain in ufology two decades ago we could even go back 10 years ago because that's when i think linda started to yeah, uh, all these people, Linda, Richard Dolan, Nick Pope, I think they, their time has come and gone at that point. It happens to everybody. You become irrelevant if you don't change with the times. Linda 
and I don't know for what or how she could be a uh, what are they called uh, journalist what are they called investigative journalist I don't know how she was a, a good investigative journalist with all of the things that she has done wrong in the last 10 years and even a little bit longer it has gotten to be a rap sheet a mile long of lies. It's crazy. And she acts like she doesn't know. This picture that Kurt brought up, uh, that was for a video game. And uh, they were calling it real. And then she had to take it down because Canby and I guess pressed her on it. You know, that's not real. It's false advertising if you're selling shit about it. Not da 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 da. She took it down. Pretty serious. All right, I'll continue. I'll let it run now. Elementary to being a professional journalist. And I have a tremendous number of awards that are even in boxes, 35, 40 professional awards as a journalist. Why you would end up with some kind of a stupid question like this is beyond me. It's hostile, Kurt. Why would you do this? It's, it's meaningless. What have you done that you've corrected? Well, I mean, why are you playing that now we're going to trap Linda in some... It's, this is ridiculous. That you redacted. I'm asking some of the most upvoted questions. So there's the sentiment in the community that you're a great investigative reporter, especially your early work, and that <laughs> oh. toward the end of the career, perhaps not as much due diligence in resources. This is just the perception. So that's why people are upvoting it. By whom? That's not my relationship with the world. I'm just telling you, this is what... I have to stop it. I can't help it. All right, we'll go back. Many I won't. people have upvoted, so Shit. I'm asking the questions that people are interested in knowing the answer to. You're accusing me of being some gullible two-year-old and I have just celebrated my 80th revolution around the sun. I have produced literally uh, a few thousand reports that are filed. What a pretentious thing to say. I, I just celebrated my 80th revolution around the world. What are you, Elon Musketeer? Unbelievable, this woman. Uh, that that to me is like somebody who eats a pear, you know, instead of an apple. And they eat it like an apple. You know what I mean? That is a pretentious fruit, according to uh, Bill Burr. And I believe that's true. <laughs> I love that joke. Uh, I had to stop it. I can't help it. How do I not stop this and interject? If I, I, if I let it go all the way through, we're going to be here f for all night with my commentary. But that is kind of why I'm here. Um, it's really weird to say all that stuff. Like, he didn't attack her. He's just asking a question. And she's accusing him of trapping her. Let's see if we can trap Linda at the end of the show. She could just turn off the camera and go away. Say, thanks, Kirk. Gotta go. Bye-bye. Great times. But nope. She did what Jeremy Corbell did when I called him live on the show. I don't want to talk. I don't talk. You get me off the show. And he stayed on for seven minutes. It's the narcissistic attitude. By the way, we will be talking about narcissistic things later. Com. Many, many, many documentaries for television broadcast. There is something about this, Kurt, that just... Deflect. Feels so so unprofessional, so unfair. He asked a question. How's that unfair? I, I am doing hard investigation every day and every week of my life on a variety of topics. Oh, God forbid we ask Linda Moulton Howdy Doody the, the hard questions. God forbid somebody asks her about that picture. God forbid we we disrupt the 80 year, 80 times around the sun year old lady 
Kurt was getting attacked. He was be called, he's been called a sexist, an ageist. I mean, this is getting to the point of ridiculousness. Linda Moulton Howe is done. Has been. It's over, Rover. See you later, alligator. Goodbye. Toodaloo. Your days are numbered. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, this this is disgusting what she's doing. Absolutely disgusting. Taking what Kurt did is just ask a question, albeit a hard one. But she should answer it like a professional. And for people to, to, to pound on Kurt for that, it, it just tells me one thing. That what we're doing here, no matter how vocal I get, how angry I look, hateful I speak, whatever you want to call it, I'm a bully, all that shit. Kurt's the nicest guy I've seen on the internet, and he still gets the hate no matter what. So, whether you're Kurt, whether you're me, whether you're Cambian, the hate will never go away. So, why does she have to stir it up like this, though? If she didn't act this way, nobody would have attacked Kurt. If she would have said something like, you know what? It happened. We made a mistake. I took it down. And that's it. We move forward from it and learn never to do that again. That's all she had to say. But she she goes on this five-minute tirade, you know, with an 80-year-old energy. By the way, fantastic for 80 years old. I'd still throw her one, you know? For a good time, for a goof, for a goof. I'd throw her one, and then I'd let Chocolate and Fluffy watch. Back to Linda. Yeah, put that in your butthole. I ask even Luis Alessandro, I ask many people similar questions about NDAs, and is this piece of evidence proof? Is it proof? Do you have a public record of so-and-so it's not as if this is such a strange question you just said no you just said it's because you have a reputation essentially of being gullible i argue with that from the face of how much i have produced that is between my books my documentaries the three thousand earth files reports and on and on the 15 years of the work I've done with ancient aliens. It's the opposite. I'm come to all the time because people say you do the best, most credible journalism in the field. That's what I hear. Yeah, you know who says that to her? Her friends, her family. Oh, Linda, you're so smart. Oh, Linda, you're so good. Oh, Linda, you just get the information perfect every time. Oh, Linda, oh, Linda, oh, Linda, oh, 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 Linda. He's so gross. Oh, God, I can't believe he just made a sexual act like that to an 80-year-old. That's right. I'm not a sexist or an ageist. I like them all. Big, tall, short, skinny. Usually you don't get short and skinny. You do, though, but I mean... Only friends and family will not tell you the truth. I noticed that. I, I know it's true. Nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings. I beg for people to tell me, Rich, you know who did? I'll tell you who did. A couple of people did. But not like Dark Hour did one night and Third Phase of Moon. Third Phase of Moon, not so much. But, you know, they, they made some uh, recommendations. But... Anyway, I, I, why am I talking? Linda, let's finish it off. I'll try to shut up. Thanks for the super chat, AL. Okay. Well. Sorry, guys. I'm glad that you hear that. It's great. It's great to hear that. I hope I'm not trying to be accusatory. I'm simply trying to ask the question that many people are, are wondering and that for whatever reason other people aren't asking. So please, I don't mean to, to offend you. Many people are asking what? Pay attention, Linda. Okay, so I'm just... Every time I read you a question, it's either taken from 
Twitter or the live chat or from Reddit or from some other places where there are likes and upvotes and people's comments on comments. And so I'm looking at, okay, what are the questions that people want to know the answer to most? And I'm simply asking them. Is that not fair? Yeah. Uh, nothing about the last 20 minutes have been fair. Been four minutes and eight seconds. 420. Sorry. Kurt knows it. He almost said it. He almost said it. No, it's only been five minutes. He almost said it. Do, 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 do. Whoever talks first loses. Do, do. That's what they tell you in sales. Don't say no. it, Kurt. No, Kurt. No, that was a, that right. was, a, oh, okay, well, we'll just end this. And I apologize that, that, that you felt like it was hostile. No, that was not my intent. Oh, good. Good one. Ian McFadden. Ian McFadden. What's up, Cloudy? Uh, it has this out. That's it. That's it. Uh, I'm a professional liar, user, writer, director, editor, and a liar. Professional. I have a tremendous number of awards. So, by your peers. From my point of view, I know how hard I work for facts. In the old days. And that I take on subjects. In the old days. People won't touch because oh. they're afraid. Like Antarctica, like that's real. That's my answer. Bye bye. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much for coming. Toodaloo. On. I appreciate it. See you later. Hasta luego. Unreal, right? Just here with the watch. Now, video now game we'll talk a little bit. Area fifty one, and that being. Thanks for the super chat, Tail. On your website, apparently. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so let's choose a different question. This one comes from the Unidentified Celebrity Review at Lou Angeles. Has there ever been a case that you had to redact because the information was incorrect? And if so, which case? Thank you so much. Huge Linda fan. Kurt, I don't know why you are reducing the interview to this kind of petty stuff. First of all, that, that question came from Unidentified Celebrity Review who Luis over there, he wouldn't ask a, a, a question that would be hurtful to her. That, that guy also plays everything, you know, by the book. He wouldn't speak like me, the truth. You know, he would just say what they want to hear. And that question wasn't bad. Have you ever had to redact something? Kurt, uh, I don't see why you have stooped to this level the end. I really don't. I have been working as a professional journalist. Here comes the deflect. Now she'll deflect. This is what liars do. They deflect. They try to change your way of thinking, get you off the subject. But she is so angry right now. She reels it in and attacks Kurt. Since 1968. I started at KNBC television. So what does this have to do with anything? She's Now she's justifying who she is. Someone who lies justifies. Just remember that. Someone who lies justifies. If somebody called me a hoaxer, I wouldn't say, but I've done this and I've worked hard. I'd say, like, prove it. What did I do? Prove it. Prove I'm a hoaxer. Don't just say it. Show me. Right? That's what Linda should have said to Kurt. Kurt, you're going to have to show me. I have no freaking idea what you're talking about. Any more questions? But she's deflecting. When they lie, they justify. Remember that. I wrote that down. I made that up. You can take it. Put it on a t-shirt. Sell it. 10 bucks a cup. $20 a hat. I went to ABC in Boston. I was hired to be director of special projects at the CBS station in Denver. I have corrected a million scripts. I have no... What does correcting a million scripts have to do with anything? Is she admitting 
that she's made million mistakes and had to correct them. That's a lot of mistakes for an investigative journalist. You're supposed to be really careful when you're investigating LMH duty. No idea. 40, 50 years, how many scripts? Information. Scripts. That is just elementary to being a professional journalist. And I have a tremendous number of awards that are even in Ooh. boxes, 35, 40 professional awards as a journalist. Ooh. Why you would end up with some kind of a stupid question like this is beyond me. That was a great question, by the way. Have you ever had to redact anything that you didn't want to redact? I mean, I'm adding that one on there. Wow, this this was fun. It's hostile. And, and the reason I did want to go over this is for the deflection part, mainly this part and how angry she gets. Of course, the whole thing's great. But it just shows you when somebody's put, when, when we do this, we did this to Lou. When Lou was on Spaced Out Radio, third phase of moon, ask Dave Scott, can you ask these questions? And there was one question they definitely wanted to be asked. When Lou was going on that show, his handler said, you need to, Dave, don't go off, ask Lou all these, don't talk about that. Well, Dave went off the script and as a favor to third phase of moon, asked Lou the question and Lou said, wow, um, uh, well, I don't negotiate with terrorists, you know, talking about Dr. Greer. It, it was, uh, Lou lost it for the first and only time we've ever seen Lou get that mad was from that question that wasn't part of the script. Linda, I don't think gave Kurt a script to go by, but probably a series of bullet points to maybe guide him through the interview if need be. I'm not sure. Uh, cause that's what these people do. They send you a bunch of stuff about them because there's so much, you know, but here she is deflecting beautiful artwork. She didn't, she didn't do it good. She didn't do it. Well, there's my English Dorothy. Damn it. She didn't do a, a, a good job deflecting. It was too obvious that she was mad. Man, I just haven't seen this from her. I've heard about these things. I've heard her get a little edgy, but this one takes the cake. And that's why we have to talk about it. These people are not human. They are robot cyborgs. They come from a different place than you or I. You know why? Because they don't care. They have no emotions is why they're a robot. They don't care about the truth. Linda Moulton Howe lost her way along the way. That's a fact. And, and she lost it early. We're talking 25 years ago. After the cattle mutilation stuff, what was she? She did crop circles first and did it very well. And then Doug and Dave came out and all that stuff went to pot. So then she went into the cattle mutilation. Now, there's rumors about, about Linda Moulton Howe being a, a informant for the CIA working in the field as one of us. Now, yeah, we can say that, but there's a shitload of evidence and disinformation proving she's like a Lou Elizondo. Do I dare say it? Bert, why would you do this? It's, it's meaningless. What have you done that you've corrected? What's wrong with that question? What mistakes have you made you had to correct? Well, doing this interview, she could have made a joke about it. Right? She could have made a joke about it. And nobody would have thought anything less of her. Whoa, sorry, I double clicked. I mean, why are you playing? Now we're going to trap Linda in some... Is, this is ridiculous. I'm asking some this is incomprehensible. questions. So there's the sentiment in the community that you're a great investigative reporter, especially your early work. Oh, Kurt, especially your early work. Definition, meaning, right now you suck. That toward the end of the career.
perhaps not as much due diligence in vetting sources. This is just a perception. So that's why people are upvoting it. By whom? That's not my relationship with the world. That's the ego talking. That's not my relationship with the world. The world she lives in is like a celebrity, right? Celebrity. Hey, Rich, hey, Rich you're the best. Hey, you're the b-. Not me, just if I was a celebrity, this is what it would sound like. Hey, Bafangul, eh? Or is it Vafangul? It's Vafangul. Scusa. Hey, pig. Hey, UFO bully. How you doing, huh? Hey, there goes the a-hole of ufology. All right. That would be for me. No, seriously, they are treated like celebrities when they go on other shows. And Kurt's the first person in years who's asked a question this hard, and she is going off. I know, we're kind of, whoa, hello? I could have sworn I heard another microphone. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is what many people have upvoted, so I'm asking the questions that people are interested in knowing the answer to. You're accusing me of being some gullible two-year-old. Yep. And I have just celebrated my 80th revolution around the sun. I Aren't most two-year-olds gullible? Just say, treating me like a two-year-old, right? Yeah, that's Linda. She's reaching, trying very hard. Um, All right, we're almost done. I have produced literally uh, a few thousand reports at earthfiles.com, many, many, many documentaries for television broadcast. There is something about this, Kurt, that just feels so, so unprofessional, so unfair. I occur, I am doing hard investigation every day and every week of my life on a variety of topics. I ask even Luis Alessandro, I ask many people similar questions about NDAs and is this piece of evidence proof? Is it proof? Do you have a public record of so-and-so? It's not as if this is such a strange question. You just said. To- no, you just said it's because you have a reputation, essentially, of being gullible. I argue with that from the face of... That's not what he I said. That is between my books, my documentaries, the 3,000 Earth Files reports, and on and on. On the and 15 on. 15 years of the work I've done with ancient aliens. It's the opposite. I don't think you want to brag about that. All the time because people say you do the best, most credible journalism in the field. That's what I hear. Yeah, your friends and family tell you that, lady. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you hear that. It's great. It's great to hear that. I hope I'm not trying to be accusatory. I'm simply trying to ask the question. That... All right. So that was pretty cool. Amazing, right? It's amazing. She she said, I made 80 revolutions around the sun. It was her birthday just recently, I think. Um, nonetheless, for 80 years old, I mean, she looks good for 80, right? If I look, as if I looked like Linda Moulton Howe when I'm 80, I'll, I'll take it. I really wouldn't. I kind of went backwards today. I wasn't supposed to play the video right away, but I did. But a lot of people wonder, why do people not like Linda Moulton Howe anymore? There's a lot of things. A lot. Um, I have an example here where there's many on many websites that talk about Linda Moulton Howe not getting the main part of the story correct. You know what I mean? Like somebody who has evidence just like this one of an alien, a picture of an alien, and it is an art, it is art for a video game. 
and she's going to act like she didn't know it. Then she didn't do her due diligence. She didn't ask the right questions. And for somebody who's been in the field as long as Linda should know all the right questions to ask. If somebody hands you a picture, the first thing you should say is, is this a fake or is this real? Be honest with me. Get a read on the person that's giving you this information. Have somebody look at it. Don't just look at it and go, ah, pretty good. Nope. Share it with a few eyes. Oh, but she doesn't because she doesn't want the story going out to anybody else. You know what I mean? She's an investigative journalist. So I guess she has people sign an NDA if they're working with her, you would think. But it is amazing what this UFO community has to deal with on a weekly, daily, hourly basis. We have no room for error. And yet we forgive and forget some people. Some people. Some people they never forget. You make a mistake in this field, it'll follow you forever. Depending. I mean, it's very rare somebody gets away with something nowadays. It's very hard. But people have called me a hoaxer and I said, you got to prove that. I don't get defensive like this because I know deep down I'd, I would never fake anything for profit anyway, uh, let alone just faking it to, to be, hey, I'm the guy or I got a story. Linda is doing that on a regular basis. She is lying. A story recently posted, this is years ago, I'm just reading from this, uh, by Linda Moulton Howe. It's this, the name of this is fra, it's turning an explainable event into an encounter with the unknown is what she did. So a 70 pound male deer was found hanging 12 feet above the ground in a maple tree in Delaware County, New York. The deer was caught in the branches of the tree and wildlife authorities went to the scene December 7th, 2002. So this goes back 20 years. According to wildlife authorities and wildlife pathologists, the death of the deer had been attributed to being shot in the heart with an arrow. It's not an uncommon practice for hunters and or poachers to use smaller animals in baiting bigger game. But now it also would not be unreasonable that the animal could have been hoisted into the tree with a rope and it would have been most difficult to get down. So is finding a deer hanging 12 feet in a maple tree in a maple tree unusual? Sure is. Does this mean that there is some kind of high strangeness or other anomalous activity associated with it? Well, that depends on who you ask. <laughs> See where this is going? How Linda interviewed Scott Van Arsdale, a wildlife technician with the Bureau of Wildlife for the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. During the interview, Howe appeared to make every attempt to find something extraordinary or unexplainable about the incident. In the end, Van Arsdale simply told Linda, how it got up in the tree is another story, and I think Ward Stone, the pathologist, and myself believe that somebody put it, some human put it up there. We're reasonably sure of that, he said. Top that off with the conclusion from the pathologist that a tree blade broke head arrow was the type of arrow used in killing the deer. And the fact that it would not be difficult to drag the animal up the tree with a rope. And what you're left with is a very plausible explanation of the event. But plausibility and reasonable evidence just doesn't suit everyone. You see, it doesn't. It's got to be something weird. You hear me? Linda went on a fishing trip looking for the unexplained to be the answer. She was making every effort to turn the event into an encounter of the highly strange. She questioned lack or presence of blood, 
Question how the animal made it into the tree. Ask if there were prints on the ground surrounding the tree. It says found. So I had to think what word would be there. At one point, Linda asked Van Arsdale how the pathologist had concluded an arrow killed the deer. Van Arsdale responded by saying, oh, it's real easy because the arrow leaves a hole and the blades, cutting blades on the hunting head, slice right through. He even said it was a three-blade broad head arrow. So there is nothing else that is going to be confused with an arrow wound. So the guy knows it's an arrow, a specific three-bladed arrow. Capiche? <laughs> it's two of them. Van Arsdale answer led to yet another question with Linda, trying to make the missing arrow sound mysterious. But that leads to the question, what happened to the arrow? Their answer is simple. These arrows are expensive, upward to $15 a piece. They take them and reuse them. Uh. What happened to the arrow that was there? And how did this deer end up 12 feet above the ground in a tree with no arrow in its body? She's not understanding. What is wrong with her? She doesn't like the answer. She sees a deer in a tree and her mind is like, can't lift a deer. There's no way a human or two or three could put a deer in a tree. Never happened before in history that she knows of a deer being lifted into a tree. Linda has never been hunting before. How would she know? Did she ever investigate hunting? Hunting deer? Deer in tree? Look it up. Unbelievable, this woman. After the interview, it was clear based on the testimony of Van Arsdale that nothing alien or anything otherwise had taken place. No big mystery, no UFOs, no aliens, no cattle mutilations, nothing. Van Arsdale reasonably answered each question and no unusual patholo pathological or other strange forensic evidence was discovered. In fact, no evidence showing that the animal had been dropped into the tree was presented, nor did Linda ask about it in her published interview. Broken branches above the carcass on the tree, broken limbs, hair embedded in the bark, trauma to the deer's body from dropping at Al. Another cr critical question missing from the interview was if a history of animal poaching exists in the area. This is a story no one would have wasted their time on except perhaps for an interesting blurb in a local newspaper. Crimes happen all the time in national forests involving animals, but how? Apparently had other things in mind for this story. Enter a leap not even Bigfoot him or herself could make. In spite of the animal's death being explained and nothing unusual being found, how decided it would be a good idea to make some connection with the hanging animal carcass and her experiences in investigating unusual animal deaths. Linda writes, even though the New York deer shows no signs of blood or excisions of hide or tissue, during my investigations of the worldwide animal mutilation phenomenon, I have heard from law enforcement and ranchers that occasionally deer or other wild game have been found dead with no signs of blood hanging from broken tree limbs as high as 14 feet off the ground. Howe then refers to an expert from one of her books and the reported encounter a Washington state man had with Bigfoot in 1977. Steve said the Bigfoot creature was about eight feet tall, had a cone-shaped head and had solid black hair about four inches long all over its body. Five months later, in the early morning hours of August 8th, 1977, Bismarck got home from a night out and went for, you know, get some corn and barley to feed young calves he was raising. I hear what sounds like a bunch of coyotes yelping out in the back. Sounds like a hundred of them or something. I thought maybe coyotes had a deer and were tearing it apart. You know, death. Then it sounded like puppies getting crushed uh, by something stomping on them. So then I think, Maybe they're tangling with the bear, you know? Pretty soon, something starts screaming, and it's scary. High-pitched scream, you know, like my wife. 
Then all the coyotes' noises stop. Dead silence. I don't hear shit. And this thing, it, it, it's still screaming. And I slammed the door shut. I was scared. I run and get my 30-30. Because I don't like having 40-40s, if you know what I mean. Eh. And I'm thinking that uh, this thing could be up in my house in like a second or two, you know. Then my sister next door calls up and she says, Did you hear that noise? I thought I was going to knock the house down, she said. I thought it was so loud. I told her I think it was Bigfoot howling. And I called... Deputy Sheriff Jerry Phillips, I told him what was happening. He said that someone else had called him to report they'd seen a large orange going object drop down in the woods over my way. Phillips came out again and investigated. He didn't find any dead coyotes or other animals back there, but he found some tracks in the woods. He took plaster casts and all that shit, you know, like scat and stuff over there. I swear to God, if they catch this Bigfoot, I'm going to rip his bolt. What? Just read? Well, they talked with Jerry Pippen in 1996 about that Bismarck account, and he remembered all of the story and more. He sent me uh, 100 pages of file reports and photographs, including a Polaroid photo of a possible Bigfoot track cast in plaster. That was on the farm, Bismarck. I don't know. Why? Where am I going? Oh, there were several dozen unusual animal deaths near Bismarck's home in 77. And one of the strangest was a deer found hanging uh, from a tree limb 14 feet off the ground. Case closed. Linda solved it all. Bigfoot killed that deer with an arrow. This is unbelievable, this woman. I read all that to get to there. Man, you know... I know how to waste time sometimes. My apologies. <laughs> I could have read two sentences. I figured it was going to come up sooner or later. I didn't think it was going to be that much later. Unbelievable. Did you see that Tampa Bay game? Freaking believable, right? Good games yesterday. I watched them all today. Good games. It's going to be in the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Rams versus uh, the uh, Kansas City Chieftains. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to pick... I don't know why I feel it, but I do. That the Rams might pull off the upset, but I, I, I think this year, it's the Rams. And they're going to win 27 to 24. You hear? Anyway, that's all I got to say. Linda is a shady figure in the community. I would never pay for anything that she has for sale, but I, uh, I'd i still throw her one. I'd throw you one, Linda. You're welcome. I hope she's watching. I hope you're watching. I want to show you this video now. Two Blackhawks. And I, that's not a group or anything. It's, these are helicopters. It says two Black Hawks chasing a UFO in Durham, Connecticut, on the 20th at around 6.35-ish. I don't like it. I hate this video. I'm going to play it, though, if you haven't seen it. Open up. Open up to the big page, you big dummy. You see it? Look at the light on the ground. Now, a lot of people are saying that this here is a UFO and there's a helicopter, and there's a helicopter, right? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? This is not the UFO, is it? Or is this? Now, it, I look, it's got to be this. But this looks like, as you can see the light, there's an actual tube of light. I see it. 
uh, it looks like it's pretty direct and it illuminates the ground right here. Yeah, it could be. Nobody tells us anything. There's, see it on the ground? There's no story. I keep thinking I see a line attached to this thing. So now I'm really wondering, which is the UFO? This one? I know this isn't it. And this isn't it. Because it says two UFOs, right? What does it say? Two helicopters, two schnooks. I don't know if they're schnooks. Two helicopters are being chased by a UFO? What was that again? Two Blackhawks chasing a UFO. I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, watch again. So this would have to be a helicopter right here. Let's pause it. There's something up here. So this is a spotlight, I think. Let's see. See, this is a light, a spotlight. There's the helicopter. I see. This is on the bottom. And it's shooting down. So this is a helicopter. Now this, and I'm, I haven't played further yet, looks like this. But there's no blinking lights on here. Two of these have blinking lights, right? See that? It's just facing a different direction for the second. That's all. This has the spotlight on. This one doesn't. And th this looks like three helicopters to me. But this one doesn't have any flashing lights. I just think it's the angle. Or I think it was. Wasn't it reported that one of these was uh, secret? undisclosed, talked about black project craft that doesn't have a transponder on it or blinking lights. I thought that was what I heard. But there it is. Uh, I call bullshit on this one. I don't like it. I did at first. I thought it was really cool. But did you see how that was right there at the end? That was weird, right? I never noticed that. Watch. Uh, maybe it's fake after all that. You know, that's what I'm going to say. It's fake. It's fake. I'll just do what everybody else does. Fake. No proof. That was a that was an interesting one. But I just think it's uh, look, it's possible. But the craft in the front looked like the other two craft that were behind it. Right. That's all. This when you stop it right here, this has the same kind of light feature as that. It's three helicopters. That's all. As a matter of fact, I even thought I saw a flashing light on this one. There it is again. Comes and goes maybe in the clouds. Nah, it's just away from us. Who knows? And that is really pixelated and poor quality too. So we don't know. It's not a, I, I'm going to say this right now, guys, gals. In-betweens, transitionings, I don't know. That's right, Goofon loves all, in case you didn't know. 12 things a narcissist would like to say to deflect responsibility and gain the upper hand. Dorothy sent this to me, Dorothy Hawkins, and uh, when I saw it, you know, I've seen a lot of these. I get a lot of... Uh, I think it's from Reddit that sends them to me, like how to know somebody's a narcissist. There's always something narcissist. And when I saw this one, I'm like, you know what? It's new. So I'm going to, I'm going to, it'll fit in well tonight. And that's why I got it right here. So we're going to take a listen to a few of these. Uh, mm -hmm. This comes from Tammy M. Joyce. Wow, 68,000 subscribers. Let's give her a subscribe. Help her out. We'll do we'll do fair use. And hold on. Thank you everybody for supporting the show. Uh Goofon is a uh viewer supported channel. We do boots on the ground documentaries, 
analyzing footage, talking about current events six nights a week, but working seven hours a day. <laughs> I know, wait, what is it, 24 hours a day, eight days a week, something like that. Uh, thank you all. You can go, you know, use PayPal or Cash App or become a patron. All the links are in the description of every show, including this one and or the channel. Goof on. You can go to the About button. There it is. Look at that. Hey, the Josh and Artemis show. Yes, they will be coming on Friday. I can't wait for that. Yep, I've got another special someone coming up in this week too. Not confirmed yet. But the Josh and Artemis show, what a great time I had Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, I was at the peak of sickness when I was on their show. It was unbelievable. I don't know how I did two hours and 13 minutes. You know how? Because it was a good time. I'm always up for a good time, guys. I can't wait till Friday. And I saw Alien Girl and I'm very angry. Not at you. You guys were nice. Some people. I'm just saying I saw the alien girl. There was like 10 people on it. Thank you for your support. Again, mucho gusto, generoso. The Josh and Artemis Show. Check it out right here on YouTube. What's that? Thanks again, The Josh and Artemis Show, with a $2.80 super chat all over this speech. Mucho gusto, generoso. Giddy up. Sorry, it's good. Grazie, grazie. Let's play this narcissist time. How to tell when somebody's deflecting what they would say, do, or convince you? Capiche? Oh, <laughs> it's a three capiche show. I'm gonna... Hello, friends. Welcome hey. back to my channel. My name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm Hi, an Tammy. empowerment life coach specializing in codependency and narcissistic abuse recovery for empaths, scapegoats, and awakening light leaders. Hey, I used to be all three of them. If you're new to my channel, a very special welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. Okay. So let's talk about 12 things narcissists say to deflect responsibility. Anytime. And gain the upper hand. All right. Number one, I know. Despite outward appearances, narcissists are deeply insecure, hypersensitive people with a bizarre need to be secure. I am not hypersensitive. That's bullcrap. I know. Superior and above others in any way they can manage. They can also be rigid, controlling, and defensive. No matter what you say or what you might bring to the conversation, they always know or know better. They knew that already. They don't need you to inform or tell them because, you know, they know it all. <laughs> I want to say some names, but I can't. And already know everything there is to know. It's exhausting just trying to have a regular conversation with this type of person. And if you aren't solid and boundaried, you can easily find yourself tippy toying around them because of their hypersensitivity and extreme defensiveness. I may be a narcissist. I don't want to play this game anymore. She made this video about me. I didn't know. I didn't know. I wouldn't call. You know what? I don't think narcissists know that they're narcissists. Just like a crazy person doesn't know they're crazy. What? Ugly people don't know they're ugly. Let's listen to some more of me. It's all about me, right? I'm going to skip ahead and see what else she says about me. Let's go to 314. John 314 figures in other words I'm pretending to not understand what you're saying or where you're coming from so I can avoid being held accountable for the appalling way I don't do I that. behave and treat you in this relationship number four I can't believe how selfish you are now let's be real all hurt feelings aside this one is actually hilarious coming from the narcissist 
If this isn't the epitome of the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. You'll hear this in particular when you aren't easy to manipulate and aren't willing to capitulate to their expectations and demands, and therefore aren't cooperating with or enabling them in their toxic attitudes and behavior. The moment you set a limit or boundary, the moment you say no to their expectations, desires, or demands, you'll be called selfish. You're so selfish for taking care of yourself. You're so selfish for having reasonable and healthy limits and boundaries. You're so selfish for having a mind and a life of your own. I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Scared. I was scared. I like, uh, hey, Ricardo Jimenez with the $2 super chat saying, Happy Monday, aliens, peace, and tacos. I hate that this interrupts my whole me. That's narcissists. Cystic. Thanks, Ricardo Jimenez. $2 super chat, a continuing supporter of my goodness gracious goof on. Appreciate it. Here you go. Three, two, English. One, two. Thank you very much. Mucho gusto, generoso. I just saw something very, very funny. Very funny. Beep. Paul Galvin says, Joe Biden doesn't know he's president. No. He doesn't. He always says President Harris. And did you see that uh, Jen Psaki said President Obama by accident? Because Obama's running the show from behind the scenes in an earpiece. That's what he said he always wanted to do if he could run a third term. Wear an earpiece or have the president wear an earpiece and he'll just tell him what to say. Hey, that's what's happening. Rich, if you suspect you're a narcissist, you're not. You're just a human. Oh. What makes you think I'm human? I am not human. (laughs) You guys are great. The reason I'm talking about narcissistic behavioral things, because Linda Moulton Howe is a narcissist. Right? She fits into all these categories. She was deflecting with this type of reasoning. Look, here's one more we'll play. Where is it? No, not that one. That's free consultation. This one. Narcissist is really saying what this one is. Your high maintenance is what they say, right? Oh, high maintenance. Now, what the narcissist I don't like that is one. really saying with this one is, no wonder you don't have you. No wonder nobody likes you. This is what a narcissist says. She didn't say that. I'm going for what. Yep, this is what she said. You need help, Kurt. That's not nice, Kurt. You were very mean, Kurt. What else? You'd be nothing if it weren't for me. Yeah, I never said that. I've thought it, though. Yeah, I thought it. I've thought that before. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought that before. I've never said it, though. But because if it's true, there's nothing wrong with saying that. Does that make me a narcissist? What's wrong with saying that? That you'd be nothing if it weren't for me. They're lying. Oh, she did say that. All narcissists think people are lying anytime somebody... uh, uh, That's me too. No, that's not what she's meaning, right? They're lying. When their narrative doesn't match what others say, no matter what the circumstances or who the others may be, they're lying as well. That's it! That's it. I'm not a narcissist. Thank God. It panned out. It pans out. I'm almost. I mean, I'm walking a thin line. But I am no Linda Moulton, Howdy Duty, Fresh and Fruity, Chocolate and Fluffy. I am not that. Boy, was she a narcissistic person. 
We've got a lot more to talk about. Thank you for hanging out tonight here on Goofon. Um, let me pull up some other things we've got for you. You know, uh, eh, George Knapp. Oh, by the way, before I get to George Knapp, did you hear Meatloaf died? I know. He died. I will do anything for love, but I won't do that. Remember that? Ah, it's sad. Yeah, I can't believe it. Meatloaf, Louis Anderson, it's the same guy. It's the same guy. No, it's not the same guy. Same size. How dare you? Huh. Crazy unknown biological UFO. Okay. I have to talk about this now. This sighting is unbelievable. We're going to go to third phase of moon two nights ago. Well, 36 hours ago. The 23rd. This sighting is unreal. I don't know what it is unless it's fake. There's no explanation for what this thing is other than it has to be faked. And it isn't. So don't say it, all right? Let me say it. But I'm saying, if this isn't real, I'm going to be angry because it's one of the coolest sightings of the year. If not the num my favorite sighting of the year. It's caught by a drone. Check it out. Is this it? I don't have it yet. All right, let me get to the other one. This isn't it. Here we go. Acceleration. Commercial drone. Here we go. of drones. We have a submitter. We've got permission granted from a amazing YouTuber. This is unbelievable. Speaking of drones, we have a submission from a YouTuber out of the UK. He goes by the secret vault. He does a lot of exploring under underground bunkers and lots of crazy videos. Guys, I want you to go check out the secret vault, but Recently, he was taking footage of the Pete Daughtry old house with his drone. He captured something that he can't explain. What's amazing is he didn't realize what he captured until he got home and was go he was going over the footage and realized something happened. Well, right now, we've gained permission from the secret vault to share this footage with you. We're going to be supplying the original link, but guys, I want to get your thoughts. And the secret vault wants to get your thoughts as well. He does analysis of his own video. And this is what's quite amazing. The public are doing the hard work capturing the UFO videos and providing their own opinions of what they captured. Watch this guys by the secret vault. So here we go. This is the bizarre footage and uh, I cannot see it being um, a balloon, although it looks like something being held up in the air but there's no balloon present as you can see it's sped up 300 percent that was showing that there was a bit of uh wind moving in the direction from where we're looking now so coming towards us from that direction is the wind and you can see that by the fact that i was standing still now i will replay this footage and i will boost it up because it's very dark there and i'll zoom in so you can see there's nothing flying in that direction it looks like a balloon and then I stopped the camera and I restarted it again with the ISO turned up so that I could see a little bit into the darker shadowy areas because it was as you can see just about sunset so as we come along it's at 31 seconds and uh, then this object pops out from near the barns in the distance uh, pops out jumps up to the height that I'm at and then comes towards me at great speed. Now, it's quite common for birds to do, there it is, there we are. So, it's quite common for birds to come directly at a drone, but I've never seen anything like this. 
Um, so let's have a look again. Oh, did you see that? So here you can see there's nothing really did shining see that? like a balloon or anything that Watch would be holding this. towards me at great speed. There's going to be something no, here. Watch. Birds to do. There it is. Oh, I went too far. Drone, but right over here somewhere, I see this. something going through um, the bushes. So let's have a look again. Let's see. Right there. And then it disappeared. So see, it was no wobbling. See it? Watch. Um, so let's have a right look here. Again. There. It dis just disappears. That's so, so here weird. You can see, there's nothing really shining like a balloon or anything that would be holding up a piece of string that I can see. And we're zoomed in now. And I cannot see anything Something down over that there. area that would be glinting. And you've got the sun in the distance, so it would, it would hopefully show up something reflective like a mylar balloon, but I cannot see a thing. So now we zoom back into that area and it's above the top left of the barn in where the tree is. And it sort of pops out in less than 10 seconds. So. Um, it's very hard to see, but if you know where you're looking, there it is, there it is, and then it comes and whoosh. What is so, that? Yeah, let's have a look at it again. I know, I know what it looks comes like, up, but it's not that. And comes straight at us. Yeah, it's weird, right? So, slow down <laughs> now, looking into that area. This is at 20% Wake speed. up, Stu! There's the object coming up slowly to the near the tree. Yeah. How can you say it's definitely a bird? And then, it doesn't even look like a bird. Because that's the only thing it could be, right? Very close. This unusual that's shape. That's the only thing it could like be. <laughs> i never seen a bird look like that. Something twisted below it and a hoop some sort of circle or a hoop. So let's have another look. And this time, zoomed in a little bit more. What is this thing? Seriously. Never seen anything like it. I am going to do another analysis of this where I'm going to try and noise clean some of this digital noise out and see whether it gives us a better view of that area there's the object there's the object that comes up past the hedge line how's that a nothing two. burger a nothing burger three. means it's not a ufo three. and then well, well, comes past please it. explain that that's, that's so speed. weird so let's like i said and it's either a real ufo or the guy faked it. I just don't know why this guy would fake it. His channel, all he does is uh, go to like abandoned tunnels and stuff like that. Abandoned places, I think. But they captured this, you know, just surveying the area where they were going to go looking around and whatnot. You didn't know he caught it. Look, I've caught two strange anomalies on my drone in the first couple of months I had it. And it was from the same park. I, I wish I was still living there. I'd like to do a ghost hunt there. Even though I went there at four in the morning, five in the morning before sunrise, but uh, this is very interesting. Uh, I just don't see how. Look, we'll pause it. How this is a bird. And this is in reverse, so you can see where it disappears to. It looks so like it's on a, a line, man. It's so where unbelievable. The is going back into. And he's not afraid to show it to us, but neither was that guy. From, I believe it was the Utah drone. Remember that one? Oh, it's 14,000 miles an hour. Remember that? That wasn't real. That turned out to be fake. 
Although people still don't know, but I think it was deemed fake on the real in real world. Uh, I think this is real. And here you have stabilized. So I've put the object in the center of the screen and keep it there and slow it Look down at this. so you can see the strange shape. And we'll have one more look. It's so bizarre. A more contrast I'm going to pause it here. The image here. This is at 5%. Um, wow. I just don't know. I, I see this to me. <clears throat> there's no explanation it looks like there may be like a face like there's an eye it looks reptilian it even looks like it has a little feeler coming out this looks like a turtle head and this may be its tail or antennae five percent no then it gets blurred out look at how bizarre See the head? These are the eyes. Look, that's a dragon. See the, these? This is a biological creature. See the antenna? Oh, that's the road. Shit. I don't know, ladies and germs. I just don't know. And here you have stabilized. So I've put the object in the center of the screen and keep it there and slow it down so you can see a strange shape he must have it at 60 luck. frames a second a or something on the image here this is at five percent five percent i don't know it's bizarre no just bizarre <laughs> it's all distorted now yeah i don't know man it's bizarre it's a good one. It's a real good one. Um, I'll be making for sure tonight a third phase UFO report video and including that plus some fantastic other stuff we have. Um, unbelievable, right? That's a great sighting. I don't care what anybody says. It's a really good one. <clears throat> All links will be in the description within 30 minutes of the show ending. Usually I get them in there right away. If you want to go check these out, you can uh, see the interview from Theories of Everything, Kurt. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this, but uh, George Knapp... We've talked about George Knapp, and before, because uh, we do have some time left here, I wanted to talk about Georgie Boy. George is also someone who should uh, end it, should call it quits. His time has come and gone. That's not nice to say. I feel bad saying it. I do, because I wouldn't want to feel that way when I hit 104. You know, when I get older, I don't want people to say, you're too old. You know, you're reaching. Should I get that now? No, I don't get it. I'm just saying. But George, as well as all these people, they're one in the same. And they're, they're in this clique with uh, Dolan and uh, who else? Nick Pope, uh, Kurt Cameron. All of these guys are... Now, Kirk Cameron isn't bad at all. He's just, he was ahead of everybody, I have to admit. He was one of the first of the, the uh, older guard to say that we, do, we, we may be having aliens all wrong. It may be within the vibration or a different realm, and, and now that's what we're hearing. Maybe it's just a huge paranormal thing that's tied in with ghosts and spirits and everything else that goes bump in the night. And I don't mean KN. <sighs> but 
But from the beginning, George Knapp is him and Linda with, I think, the only two investigative journalists other than Jaime Mosan. But, uh, you know, he was in Mexico to be investigative journalists. And that had a lot of pull, a lot of a lot of power back in the day. Now, not so much. Everybody claims to be an investigative journalist. Uh, they kind of taken that term and uh, made it less important by using it so much where it isn't allowed to be used or shouldn't be used. An investigative journalist is someone that breaks new information on a story or a, a story. So if you knew there was betting going on in the NBA and you were doing a story talking to all these people and you had all this evidence but nobody else did and you broke that story, you are you know, you did investigative journalism. You brought something new to the table. And that's what George did. He was doing that for, I think, KLAS TV in uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. And uh, Linda Moulton Howe was doing this with cattle mutilations, crop circles, and things of that nature in the earlier days. But I think it was George Knapp that took the leap that was that could be the most detrimental to his career. Of course, it was the Bob Lazar story. And I always thought that that Bob Lazar story had a lot of stuff missing. And then I saw, you know, documentaries come out on it. I saw Bob talking. I remember it when it happened. I know how I felt. I remember what I felt when I saw Bob speak. But I also remember George Knapp, how he took this risk that could have been career ending, but in everybody's eyes, he did such a wonderful job finding this guy who wasn't really found, who was brought to him, basically. But he put him on the air, took a risk, and really became the UFO guy in in news, pretty much, at least locally in Vegas. But then, you know, Bob Lazar blew up uh, bigger than ever, and he had exclusive interviews with him. And uh, George Knapp has been trying to find that type of rebirth ever since. Now you're going to say, well, what has he gotten involved with that makes him so bad? Uh, Skinwalker Ranch, Jeremy Corbell. The videos that Corbell obtained was due to George Knapp's help and or connections. Without doing really any vetting. It doesn't seem like he did his due diligence. It doesn't seem like he did the investigative work. Um, I just don't have a lot to say about George Knapp other than I think he's gotten involved with people who make him look bad. And usually you are who your friends are. Have you ever heard that term? It's true. You are who your friends are. And if Bob Lazar isn't being truthful, which to this day, even I don't even know. I, I don't know. Um, I'm on the fence with him all the time. But I lean more to that he was an experiment and he thought he was working at S4 or he did work at S4 and was an experiment or that he was expendable as a young person with not a lot of family, right? Where he was easy access close by where they could watch him and spy on him. And maybe he really did work at S4 and work on alien craft. His body language, it's pretty good. I mean, 
even the guys uh, uh, on that show, the behavior panel say, I think we just heard somebody heard from somebody who saw UFOs. So it's hard. Bob Lazar is very difficult. It's easy to say he worked there. It's easy to say he didn't because that's the evidence we're, we're left with. And doesn't that seem perfect for the government? That's exactly what they wanted. So how bad is George Knapp really? Is he just trying too hard? Am I not, do I not know all the uh, scams that he was involved with? Probably not. Because I never saw George Knapp as the type of person that broke a lot of stories. But I think he got mixed in with some things with Linda Moulton Howe, maybe with Antarctica. I'm not too sure. But rumor around the UFO community is that George is slipping. George has lost his way. I mean, these are the things I've been hearing. And, you know, when I look at it from my perspective, I just see somebody who's trying so hard, too hard to get back to the glory days. Now, he's Jerry. Uh, Jerry. I'd rather Jeremy's name be Jerry, actually, to be honest. He should be Jerry Corbell from now on. Oh, my God. I got <sighs> That felt good. Um, Jerry Corbell. He is Jerry Corbell's mentor, George Knapp is. <laughs> oh, my God. Frap Sap. What are you doing, huh? Rich, you said Kirk Cameron instead of Grant. No, I don't think I did. By the way, who is the guy behind you in the yellow shades? Merv Griffin? That's George Knapp. That's George Knapp. <laughs> and that's the crazy eyes over there. And that's, uh, and that's, uh, um, Bob Lazar. <laughs> I, I said Kirk Cameron. That no, I said Grant Cameron. As a matter of fact, I, I would bet you that ten dollars. Go back and listen to it. Let me know, and then give me the timestamp. I'll listen to it afterwards. Thanks for the uh, ten dollars super chat. That's funny. This is for you, Fraps Epichi. Thank you, Frapsap, for your $10 super chat. We appreciate your support. And gush all over Kirk Cameron. Mucho gusto. Janet also. Under 17, not permitted with our parent. I almost got away with it. Thank you, Frapsap, continuing supporter of Goofon. I said Kurt? I don't think I said Kurt. If I did, that's funny, though. <laughs> I think I said Grant because I, in my mind, I remember saying Grant before I said it. I'm like, who's that guy? Grant Cameron. Grant Cameron. Who knows? Uh, you know, Kirk Cameron. That's funny. All right. All right. I said it. I said it. Holy shit balls. Ma! Ma! Mr. Davy Cooper 7! Seven. 7 is back! Get the meatballs! Where the hell you been? Oh, Merry Christmas! Oh, Happy New Year! Oh, Happy Birthday! Oh, Happy Martin Luther King Day! Come on! We all thought you were dead! Thought we were gonna find your body at the morgue! Do you know what it did to us all? <laughs> We were going to hear about some parachuting accident or something. <laughs> ah, it's Mr. D.V. Cooper. He's back. <laughs> Special balls. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, Mr. D.V. Cooper 77? It is a pleasure to see you there, laddie. What have all missed you? T 
it's amazing to see him back. It was like, isn't that weird? Right? We were just, well, I've been, every week, I think I've been saying, anybody see D.B. Cooper? Well, we did. We talked about you. It was all good. What am I going to say? It's bad. Unbelievable. Well, I'm glad you're okay. I hope you're not an imposter. You missed a lot of stuff. We need to talk. Holy crap, this year has been unbelievable already, DB. So George Knapp was a big proponent of Skinwalker Cash Ranch. Big proponent of that as well. Helped Jeremy Corbell, I'm sorry, Jerry Corbell, Crazy Eyes, make that awful movie, awful movie. What was it? Re- I made a lot of cash at Skinwalker. What was it called? Skinwalker Bash? The Rehash? Well, they did a story about about it, about why Skinwalker Ranch, the TV show, isn't really spending a lot of time on the ranch. Who cares? I said. But they talked about our friend, Zieg Fugel. Brandon Fugel. Oh, yeah. You want to hear how he got that ranch? Does anybody know? You don't know? Everybody knows he's a very rich real estate development a developer in Utah. He first heard about the Skinwalker Ranch at a local bookstore. He said, the ranch was first brought to my attention when I was at Barnes & Noble in 06 and saw Dr. Colm Kelleher and George Knapp's book, Hunt for Skinwalker, on the shelf. He said, I actually bought it, read it on the weekend, found it to be very interesting. He said he didn't think much more about it until 2015 when two science advisors of another Utah real estate magnet, what, magnate, I said magnet? All right, it's Kirk, it's magnet, it's time to go, right? Well, Bigelow approached him. Bigelow approached, here's what doesn't make sense. Fugel says he didn't think much more about the ranch until 2015, when two science advisors of another Utah real estate magnate, Robert Bigelow, approached him. Why would Bigelow approach Fugel? Well, you all know he founded Bigelow Aerospace and been been funding scientific investigations on the ranch since he had purchased it in the late 90s. Kelleher was Bigelow's lead investigator. Fugel says he developed a relationship with the two science advisors during another effort that I've been involved with a decade ago. According to Fugel, the advisors asked him whether I would be willing to entertain a potential joint venture or acquisition of the property for the purpose of advancing the research beyond what Bigelow had done for 20 years. I disclosed to them that I was approaching the topic as a healthy skeptic and that I never had seen a ghost, a UFO, or anything of the sort, and that I believed there was most likely a natural prosaic explanation for what had been reported in the, in the book and on the property, Fugel says. They were amused and shared with me the reality of what their investigation revealed. They also disclosed that the ranch had been part of a five-year Pentagon black budget program studying the UFO phenomenon and that although the results of that investigation remain classified and confidential, how do I say this, the phenomenon is real. He says he is fugal, Zieg Fugel. He says it's no longer a skeptic and that something mysterious is happening at the ranch. Uh, People ask me all the time whether I'm now a believer based on what I've seen and recorded during my ownership of the ranch, says Fugel. The honest, most direct answer I can provide is that I am not a believer. I am an experiencer. I know for a fact that it's real and have witnessed with my own two eyes what other credible witnesses at my side, what can only be described as daylight sightings of exotic craft over Skinwalker Ranch. 
Fugel's paranormal experience started soon after his research began on the ranch. <clears throat> Six months into our investigation, I had an experience while entertaining a visiting dignitary and his secretary detail that involved an undeniable sighting of what can only be described as a 40 to 50 foot long silver grayish disc-like object that performed maneuvers and were stunning and defy conventional explanation. Did you get it on video, Siegfugel? No. Da. Uh. Uh. Fugel stressed that this sighting was in broad daylight, included several witnesses. He said after the sighting, they continued to experience paranormal phenomena, which they don't have on video with all those investigators. Sounds like somebody's trying too hard. During that same afternoon, we experienced everything from our smartphones being completely drained from about 80% charge to zero, to other electromagnetic anomalies, even acute medical episodes that attained the incidents, I'm sorry, that attended the incidents that occurred on that fateful day. Many people think there's, like, anybody who has read the book Hunt for Skinwalker, they say they will know that many of those who investigate the ranch have had personal experiences with the unknown. I have been covering the ranch for over a decade, and at an event with investigators and their spouses, I had discovered they believe the phenomenon often follows them home. So much so, they now refer to this as the hitchhiker phenomenon. We don't like to talk about the hitchhiker too much because everybody's afraid it's going to trigger it or something. Ooh. That's what Dr. Travis Taylor told Den of Geek in a recent live stream interview. I have several colleagues that were putting instruments out to measure things at their house as well as at the ranch. And we're measuring simultaneous events occurring at both places. That may be a thousand miles apart even. It just happened to me, Taylor said. My brand new car. So it shuts off suddenly. All the lights start blinking on and off and crazy, which we've seen happen at the ranch. And something was going on at the same time at the ranch. I had an event, actually. That'll be in this season of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. I won't talk too much about it for spoilers. Fugel says he is aware of the hitchhiker phenomenon, but has not experienced it himself. Oh, the Fugel, he also says here, it's a known fact that numerous participants, including military operatives, refuse to ever set foot on the property again due to negative experiences that they have had. Including phenomena following them home continues Fugel. Even Mr. Bigelow has had experiences that followed him, resulting in his refusal to ever visit this property again. So, Mr. Bigelow is not coming back to Skinwalker Ranch? What a pussy. <laughs> what a pussy. Why wouldn't he go back there? You know, I would love to be that scared. Can you imagine being that scared? You never go back to a place? That's right. I said cat. Get over it. There was a uh, uh, a Reddit post on aliens. If a war breaks out, will aliens put on a show in the sky with their UFOs to stop the fighting? This is the intelligent questions of Reddit. Will the aliens defend us? 
Hey, Jacques Vallée joins the Galileo Project, if you haven't heard. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the guy. <laughs> I don't know why. I think Jacques Vallée's bullshitting. I don't trust him. I don't know why people believe this guy. I got to look into him again. It's been a while. But I remember, I, I never thought he was credible. I don't know. Forgive me. What is this? Oh, this is good. Nope, not going to play it. Nope, not taking it. Nope, nope. Um, somebody was asking me about Area 52. We'll get this. The Does anybody believe that there's an Area 52 now? Can somebody please find that on Google Earth, please, so we can have another two-week war? Look, Area 52, this is just the, it's just how the grid is labeled out in that area. That's how they know you know, how they label things. This is a, like, you know, there's 20 acres in a square. That's area 50. Another 20 acres in another square, area 51, and so on and so forth. It's just a grid-like pattern. I, there used to be a, there's a map out there. I'm not going to look it up, but it shows you all the areas, you know. There's a ton of them. All right. So, Enough of that. That's nonsense. I don't like it. People think that alien bodies are stored there. Why would they visit us aliens anyway? If aliens have the technology to visit us, what do they want? Are they just tourists? I know we can't know for sure, but rather than just say they are too complicated to understand. Let's think of some possible reasons real quick. You know what I believe. I believe that it would, I think the odds of another human to have cropped up on another planet in our galaxy throughout the universe, I think it's an a near impossibility. Now, I have been in this field, some of you longer than me, and we all hear the same thing. There's reptilians, there's the greys, right? There's the tall whites and, and, the, and so on and the this and that and the other. When you look at the ships they make, and then you see people drawing pictures of these aliens. And you look at the fingers and hands. They don't look like they would be able and, and dexterous enough. Dexter, they wouldn't have the dex. Is it dexterous or dexterity? They don't have the dexterity, it looks like, in their fingers to make things that look like man-made ships. You know what I mean? It just doesn't seem normal for a lizard to have the hands it does with the big thick nails and all that shit to make things that are put together and have, you know, right angles and geometry to it. I, I just don't see how they would make the tools. I guess they would have to be pretty freaking awesome. Weird like even. But why do they all, why do their ships always seem to look like they were made for humans to use. Now, I'm not talking about the sports model because Bob said there were three little seats in there, you know, for what looked like children would be sitting in there. You know, oh, little tiny high chair seats, you know. Like, oh, oh. And he'd always push up his glasses. Well, let me think real. Yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> but to get started, I think they're unimpressed with what we are here as a planet. Planet Earth is very small. SM all, right? Plus, we're still fighting each other. Um, 
We've our leaders are making mistakes. I mean, they, we even have missiles to kill the whole planet ten times over. We can't even respect each other's racial differences in many areas of the world. We're tribal and violent. Imagine what they think of uh, of a debate over human rights or something. The fact that it's still being debated. Now, what if there's multiple alien worlds visiting us? Their competing and conflicting interests are, are possible that if they have advanced technology, they likely aren't still fighting wars on their planet against their own race, would they? They probably don't have slaves. Even, you know, we've moved away from slave culture. But there are still slaves in this world. Why would they care? What are we to the aliens? And why would they even care what's going on here? I'll tell you why. Because we're freaking interesting. Because each person is a different program running in a somewhat make matrix of a planet, right? Doesn't it feel like that a lot of times? Coincidences. How does that happen? I'm thinking about somebody I haven't thought about in 10 years, and they called me an hour later or minutes later. I haven't seen Mary since we graduated high school 30 years ago. Holy shit, there she goes. You know, it's weird. How does that happen? Because we're human. And I know I am a human cyborg. And I don't want to get into the cyborg features of my own brain. But I'm still learning as I go along. My AI is getting better as I get older. But I'm not made to fully mature yet. Till I hit 60. And by then I would have calmed down. Maybe. I don't know. But when you have passion and you're human, it's not the same as being hateful, angry, just downright pissed at everybody. That's not Goofon. Goofon loves almost everybody. But we don't like liars. We don't like hoaxers. We don't like people that fake friend us. We don't make videos about anybody else. We do all of our talking here. We put them as mostly opinions, unless we have the facts. We try to do the right thing all the time, even when nobody's looking. But yet the attacks still happen. Kurt Jamungal, as we saw earlier in this episode tonight, was being attacked for being a professional who asked difficult questions. If we can't ask difficult questions of the people who are making incredible claims, they can get away with anything. And in this field, that's what I do. That's what I like to see. And in this field, there's more people seeing things the way we see it here. And that's not overnight, folks. That's over almost two two decades of being in the field, seeing the same patterns over and over. I may not be the most technical guy. I may not do the most detailed of research because you don't have to most of the time with with what we're talking about. And what we talk about here are the important things, I think. The lies, the people that are bringing us the lies just on a, on a regular and consistent basis and showing us videos that mean absolutely nothing to the story involved that are definitely airplanes, birds, balloons, and drones, and anything else, Corbell. Why we forgive these people and forget and let them keep working in this field and giving them the attention they don't deserve is beyond me. 
but we cannot stop asking the hard questions. Once we stop asking hard questions, people have nothing to talk about, nothing to learn, and nothing to research. Yeah, I know that last one, I had to throw something in because I only had two. I wanted to make it three. That's why the last one didn't make much sense. I know. I hear myself. Kirk Cameron, huh? I'm going to go back and check that out. I don't think I said Kirk Cameron. Damn it. I hope I did, though, because that, that would be trippy. As badly as I like talking about Lou, I feel bad about it. Not even a little. Because he is claiming he is somebody he is not. And Area 503 and I talked this weekend. And we're good. We're on speaking terms. Not that we weren't, but we had a little bit of a falling, yeah, just a, uh, it was a stupid misunderstanding. And we worked it out. We worked it out yesterday. And uh, things are good. And Manny is making this two-hour and almost three-hour documentary based on Lou Elizondo. He's putting it out, hopefully, this week or next. Uh, as long as everything goes smoothly. And we will have this discussion again about what Manny's putting out. Manny disclosed some things to me that I did not know about Lou. And it is going to create an incredible stir in the UFO community. And uh, it's going to be free to watch. So let's support Area 503 when that comes out. I'm sure that... Uh, We'll be talking about it every day this week until it comes out. If it's not this week, next week, we'll we'll keep bringing it up and letting everybody know. Um, but uh, let's come back tomorrow night and do it all over again. I'll be back regular time tomorrow, I hope, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. And uh, we'll do it again. Uh, this is Goof on Radio, Giordano's UFO Network. I am Rich Giordano. Signing off for tonight, I want to thank the moderators and super chatters. Thank you very much for all your support, and uh, I appreciate it without you guys. The show doesn't run six days a week. It doesn't run smoothly, so thank you. And the veterans and the newcomers alike, thank you for sharing some time here. I appreciate it. If you like the show, you can subscribe to it anytime you want. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything they don't want to do. Give the show three days. If you like it, come back. If not, but that's it. And everybody knows we missed Mr. D.B. Cooper, 7-7. Seven, seven. We're glad to see you're okay. And thank you for uh, coming back to Goof On. Because what are we? What are we? Where truth I Why is it down, 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 down,